This is Becky Nunn, and we're shooting on location here at Nunn Design in our office here, and I want to show you how you can tie one on. This is using deer skin lace. We have a five millimeter and we have a three millimeter, and I'm using the five millimeter deer skin lace. I have a little bit of waxed nylon cord that I'm going to be using here, and then a couple of findings. So in all, you'll need some deer skin lace, some waxed nylon thread, and I also have a darning needle, and a pencil. This is uh, something you're going to want to invest in if you're going to start getting into leather work, is um, a leather hole punch, and my husband made these uh, nice little handles on here, making it easy for me to grab onto, and, and it's much easier on my hands when I'm punching. Um, you're also going to need to have a couple of pair of needle nose pliers when we're opening and closing these jump rings and a pair of scissors for cutting. The first step that we're going to be doing in tying one on is we're going to be making a master um, for where you're always going to punch your holes. And it's easiest to punch the holes when the piece is flat like this. Punch, 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 punch. And in order to know where those holes are, we're going to create uh, a master template. So using one of the ends of your deerskin lace, you're going to lay it out and you're going to bend it over and it's going to be approximately an inch that there's going to be an overlap. You see this part here is about an inch and that could give you a little bit e uh, extra if you wanted to trim it off. Then you're going to go ahead and with your hole punch, your leather hole punch, you make sure your leather is lined up. I have approximately mm, a quarter inch. I'm pinching that tight right there to keep my leather in place. And then I am using my hole punch to try to find the center mark. See how I'm trying to find the center mark in my leather. And then I'm punching down to create a hole. And then I'm going to slide it over. Whoa, look how far off I was. That's quite okay. So. Um, what you can do is go ahead and trim that off with your scissors. And this again is just your masterpiece. So don't, don't freak out if you're just creating a template for you to uh, make your holes in the future. So you're going to go ahead and bend that over again, approximately a quarter inch. And let's see if I can get this to line up better this time. I'm having a little bit hard time seeing I have a black leather. It's a little bit trickier. So how centered am I now? Punch. And you're going to move it down slightly, line it up, and you're going to punch again. Oop, you can see how I'm out of alignment there. So let me just put this down, line this back up, you can see where I already kind of made a little indention there. That's going to be great for me to register it back up. So I'm just kind of slightly pressing down just to keep it in position. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and punch my next one. All right, so if this isn't perfect, that is fine. Basically, all it's showing me is where I need to mark my leather in order to have in order to fold it over and get my registration in position. So when I'm threading that um, wax nylon thread up through the holes. So here's my master. And it's all cattywomped and we might be able just to create a next master after this, but it kind of just gives you an idea of where I'm going to mark my registration for my holes. So now I can be perfect in getting it exactly in the center. So using my pencil, and I found that it's best to use a pencil because um, when I used, uh, that's probably a little bit far apart, so I'm gonna probably move it a little bit farther over. Um, when I used a pen, uh, it tended to uh, bleed on the uh, leather a little bit, so I found that the pencil was the best uh, indentation maker <laughs> that I can find. So I went through a lot of sharpening pencil leads because I broke a lot, so I have a pencil sharpener handy too. But see what I was doing? I was just making a master, so now I know where my punches go, and it's super easy to then, actually, I like to go from the longest end out. 
So now I can just go punch, 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 and punch. So see how that is so nice and handy. Now those, see how those lined up perfectly. And then I would do that, you can, I would trim away this excess edge um, and then do the other side as well. So now we have our item punched and we're going to do our sewing. Now that you have your deer skin lace punched and you're ready to start your sewing, you're going to want to thread on to a darning needle some wax nylon thread and I'm using a brown color which looks really great with the black. So what you're going to want to do is starting from the top you're going to go down and this is sometimes a little bit tricky to get through that thick darning needle and that waxed a nylon thread so you just have to pull it through and pull it taut and then I just thread it through and I leave about that much excess. I'm, I'm constantly thinking about um, how I'm utilizing all of my materials so that I don't overuse and waste this. So um, I know that it's approximately about that length for when I tie that knot, I'll have very little excess that I have to trim off and have as waste. So I went down and now I'm gonna come back up the other side pulling it through. So now I have that nice loop in the back. You get a little bit of the wax part, you can just remove it. Then I push this over the other side because I'm wanting to get a nice clean hole to go back down a second time. And sometimes I found if I tried to go down again without moving that all the way over, I would uh, catch and thread on and I don't know, it just got all funky. So just move it all the way over and then press down again. Pulling it through. And so you can see now I have a nice loop and I'm gonna come back up one more time. And now you have a nice piece and you can tie it off. So I do one loop one way. See how I tied a little knot and I'm going to come back and do the knot the other way. And then you can use your needle nose pliers to pull on both ends to make sure that knot is very secure and then you just trim away your excess of your nylon thread. Now that your both ends are sewn and you've trimmed away the excess of the waxed nylon thread, we're ready to start assembling. And um, to create a piece like I am doing here in the beginning piece that you saw, um, I'm using um, hammered toggle and bar set. You'll need a charm that you might wanna add on um, I have two larger size, these are our nine millimeter textured jump rings. I have three actually, and two six millimeter textured jump rings. So the first step is we're going to go ahead and um, thread the jump ring through this end here. And you can do that by holding your needle nose pliers in position or just by threading it through like I did there. And then to close that jump ring, um, I'm just moving one set of jump rings. I'm, hold, I'm holding the jump ring at three o'clock and nine o'clock, and then I'm bringing that um, part where the slit is together and moving it back and forth until it has a nice flush. Then I'm gonna use one of the nine millimeter, excuse me, the six millimeters. I'm gonna attach that on and I'm also gonna attach on the toggle bar onto that six millimeter jump ring and then close that up in the same way. See, I'm holding it at a nine millim I'm holding it at three o'clock and nine o'clock and moving those pieces together to create that flush. Now moving on to the other side, you're gonna attach on the jump ring, the nine millimeter jump ring, 
holding at six and uh, nine and three so that that's flush and go ahead and take your six millimeter attach it and now we're going to be doing the toggle ring threading it on and then closing by holding at three and nine then the next and last step is to attach your charm of choice I'm using the Lotus Charm with a nine millimeter, threading it on to the toggle ring, holding three and nine, closing until I have a nice flush. And now I have completely tied one on. And that is how you use the deerskin lace to make a fabulous, fun necklace like I'm showing here. This is Becky Nunn with Nunn Design and I hope you really enjoyed making this fun project uh, using the deerskin lace and learning how to tie one on.